With the release of Nintendo World Championships NES Edition, it's once again gotten some of those classic IPs on my mind. Nintendo has just brought back Famicom Detective Club with the first new entry in 30 years thanks to Emio the Smiling Man. And there's still some IPs that have not yet gotten that treatment. Sure, we've gotten Kid Icarus Uprising 25 years later. Now we've got Famicom Detective Club. We got F-099 after all this time. But there's one game in Nintendo World Championships that could use the revival treatment. Ice Climber. And you know what game should have been the modern Ice Climber? Luigi's Mansion 2. Luigi's Mansion 2 is a bit of a black sheep in the Luigi's Mansion series. Since it originally came out on 3DS, one could argue that the timed mission structure was to help encourage portable play. You could open the game, play a mission, and when the mission was concluded, you would have a nice, clear stopping point so that you could come back to the game later in short bursts. And I understand that perspective. And I don't think the mission structure on its own is bad, but it does make the game feel more awkward when you compare it alongside 1 and 3. Luigi's Mansion 2 is far from a bad game, but it is my least favorite of the three Luigi's Mansion games because it's missing that sense of free exploration. In Luigi's Mansion 1, you have the entire mansion available to you, and your only stopping point is, oh, this door is locked, I need to find the key somewhere. But that just encourages further exploration in another direction. Luigi's Mansion 3 does use the floor structure, where you need the elevator key to proceed to the next area, but each of those areas is pretty nice and open, a lot to figure out in terms of puzzles, and you never have to get pulled away from the floor that you're working on and then get put back in there all of a sudden. It's a whole stopping and starting thing with Luigi's Mansion 2, uh, but my big issue is the fact that Luigi's Mansion 2 decides to grade you on these missions, and one of the key factors in determining your 1, 2, or 3 star rating is how fast you completed the mission. And in some way, I can understand wanting to, you know, master the mission, get good at beating the ghosts, and collecting what you need. But some of these missions are a bit tedious. I'm not the type of person who wants to go back. The game also introduced the collectible gems, which would later reappear in Luigi's Mansion 3. And to me, that's an odd mishmash. Why are you trying to get me to complete this mission as fast as possible, but also giving me these hidden collectibles that I want to take my time exploring to find? I enjoy looking for the hidden gems, but put in the same game with a time limit, it just feels like an odd design choice to me. And that is why, that right there, that's one of the key reasons I feel that Luigi's Mansion 2 could have been repurposed to a modern ice climber. Because I think the idea of a timed mission makes way more sense for something like climbing a mountain. Like, oh, of course, if you can climb the mountain faster, that's a good thing. It's a more replayable mission type. So just imagine that in this modern Ice Climber remake, instead of different mansions and different segments of mansions that EGAD is teleporting you to, no, you have a base of operations at the base of the mountain, and that's where you keep getting pulled back after each climbing mission. Uh, maybe in one climbing mission you gotta go rescue someone on a certain part of the mountain, but in another one you're just trying to reach a certain checkpoint on the mountain and planting your flag, establishing a new base even, from which you can resume the next mission. I think it makes way more sense to break it up like that, because in Luigi's Mansion 2, oftentimes you get pulled out of a mission when realistically, if you wanted to, you should be able to stay there and resume what you're doing. Like, Oh, Luigi, you found the key to the gate. Let me pull you back right now. As opposed to, oh, Luigi, you found the key to the gate. Do you want to keep going and then explore what's beyond the gate? Oh, no, sorry, we're not going to give you that option. But in an Ice Climber game, you could be graded on the time 
because maybe you need to make clear platforming decisions and execute properly in order to finish the course as quickly as possible. Maybe someone's life is on the line because they're stranded on a cliff on the mountain and if Nana and Popo are going to rescue them then they need to be pretty timely about it. I just think a time limit fits much better in that context and then getting pulled back is conserving your stamina. You're resting at your base. You're getting ready for your next climb. There's probably different upgrades that you can do or maybe little trainings that you can do. Uh, there's an upcoming release called Cairn that seems to be taking this sort of approach where you're actively training for this large mountain climbing endeavor. So I think there's some shared DNA there <laughs> that could be used. Another feature in Luigi's Mansion 2 that is probably divisive. I don't know how divisive it is. It returns in 3, so clearly it wasn't the end all for everything. But I have mixed feelings about the dark light. Some of the puzzles in Luigi's Mansion 2 are really just shining your dark light all over the place to find some hidden object that you need to progress. And in some ways it works because you're looking for stuff that might feel out of place or maybe because of the repeated mission structure you've been in this room before, don't you notice that something is missing that should be there? Like, oh sure, in some cases it's pretty obvious where to use the dark light, but in other cases it felt very random, just very trial and error. But in an ice climber setting, we could have a way to incorporate hidden paths. I want you to think for a second about the Ice Climbers moveset in Super Smash Brothers. Of course Sakurai had to take liberties when developing that on account of they only appeared in a NES game where their whole shtick was jumping and breaking blocks to reach the top of a mountain. Uh, they needed a bit more to do besides jump and carry a hammer around. So to an extent their moveset includes like shooting ice beams. Now I want you to think for a second about Xenoblade Chronicles 2 of all games. There's this thing in the game called a field skill, and if you have a blade that has that field skill at a high enough level, they can open a new pathway on the world map. One of these is freezing a new path. So we take the Ice Climber's move from Smash, and then instead of a dark light situation where the path is just invisible and you need to shine your light on it to find it. No, there's a path that you can't traverse and instead of using a dark light you use an ice beam to freeze yourself a new path which could potentially be a shortcut and help you cut down on your time for that mission when you come back to it. I think that's a better melding of freeform exploration and giving yourself a time limit. Like, okay, the reason you're doing the exploring is to find new options that could help you cut down on your time later. And finally, I just think that we could incorporate some hammer combat in there. Uh, there's probably enemies or wildlife on this mountain. And Nana and Popo have these giant mallets. We've seen them put to good use in Super Smash Brothers. Uh, so just take the vacuum combat. And admittedly, this will be a bit more like Luigi's Mansion 3. In Luigi's Mansion 2, all you can really do is suck on the ghosts and then charge up a extra hard burst pull that you can do at the right time. Uh, and you have to dodge a bunch of stuff while doing this, so there is this balance at play of I need to dodge this, but if I hit the dodge button, then I lose all the charge I was building up, so am I going to try and build that charge or am I going to do the dodge execution? There's a bunch going on, but Luigi's Mansion 3 introduced the slam ability. When you've got a good hold on the ghost, you can hammer it into the ground over and over again. And that's the key word, hammer. So, I think even the combat, there's some basis there to make a modern ice climber game. You just replace the vacuuming action with that of hammering. Maybe we combined with the freezing beam that we have in the moveset, there's probably a way to paralyze your foe, just like with the strobe bulb, but with ice instead. And then you hammer away at it. <laughs> Throw that in with some sort of narrative about why you need to reach the top of this mountain. Include some cameos and callbacks to stuff from the original NES game. And there we go. A modern ice climber 
built on the back of Luigi's Mansion 2. I think it would not only fix the design issues that I have with Luigi's Mansion 2, but it would finally give Nana and Popo another chance to shine and remind people why they're in Smash in the first place. But let me know what you think of this crazy idea, your own ideas for a modern Ice Climber remake, or why I'm very wrong about Luigi's Mansion 2. Still a good game, just, just to be clear. Luigi's Mansion 2 is fine. It's just not my favorite. <laughs> let me know all about that in the comments below. Bye.